So in this guide, we're going to install NixOS onto our Steam Deck. We're going to put it on the SD card so that we can dual boot it with SteamOS, and we're going to make it so that both the SteamOS and the NixOS install can share the same game library. To do this, you're going to need a couple of things. Obviously, you're going to need a Steam Deck, you're going to need an SD card, and then you either need a USB hub or a USB-C dock. You don't need a Steam Deck specific dock. Most USB-C docks for laptops will also work. So the very first thing you have to do is bring up the boot menu. To do that, when your Steam Deck is powered off, hold the volume down button and then power it on. And then this menu will come up. And you'll want to select your USB device and start the boot process. Then we just start the NixOS installer as normal. If you're using the built-in display on the Steam Deck, you're going to get an additional error here saying that the resolution is too small to display the installer. That's easily fixed by minimizing the installer, right-clicking on the display on the background, choosing display settings, and then adjusting the scaling down to 100% from its default of, I believe, 150. And then you'll want to connect to your Wi-Fi as normal by clicking the Wi-Fi icon in the lower right of the screen. I'm blurring my note because my neighbors like to put their family name in the Wi-Fi and it shows up here sometimes, so. Since it's just temporary, to make your life easy, just use the classic blowfish method. It'll save you having to actually set up the keying properly, and then just put in any password. It's going to be deleted on reboot anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now you just go through the next installer, just like you normally would, selecting your locale options and setting your user and password. Because I'm using a dock and an external display hooked up to a capture device, you can see I'm struggling a little bit with the input. The lag is very hard to get used to, and the screen deck little trackpad is kind of hard to use. You want to make sure to check the unfree box, because we'd have to set that up later anyway, so you might as well add that option now. Then on the partitioning screen, select your SD card and make sure you have it set to no swap, and choose erase partition. Depending on the speed of your SD card, this part can take quite a while, so just be patient, it will finish. It'll get stuck at 46% and seem like it's doing nothing, but that's normal. Instead of checking the box and hitting reboot like I did here, just exit the installer when it's done, and then go down to the KDE menu in the bottom left there and choose shutdown. You'll need to go into the boot menu to get your Steam Deck to boot the SD card, and you have to have it powered off to do that. So. Save yourself booting up into SteamOS once, then shutting it down again. So now with the device powered off, just hold the volume down key and power it back on to get that boot menu again. And this time select your SD card as the boot device. Once it boots up, just log in, and we're going to open a console and edit our configuration to enable SSH. For me, it's a lot easier to edit it through SSH than trying to do it with my awkward dock slash capture setup, but this step's entirely optional if you want to do it directly on the Steam Deck. And to do that, we're just going to uncomment this one line and then do a rebuild switch. So now that we have our Steam Deck with NixOS on it installed, booted up with SSH enabled, we'll just log into it via SSH. I've already logged in here. And we're going to do a few basics just to get the system up and ready and make it so we can share the same Steam library as the Steam OS without causing any conflicts. So, 
take a look. What we want to do is just find the biggest partition. Right there, it's partition 8. So. And we'll just make a place to mount it. And then we're going to mount slash dev slash nvme m1p8 slash mnt steamos. And the default user on SteamOS is DEC, so that's the folder we're going to want. Okay, and it seems to be using a group ID of 1,000. And conveniently, the default first UID on Nix is the same as it is on SteamOS. So we don't have to do anything special with that. So now let's go into etc nixos configuration.nix. And we're going to edit my user. We'll take out the packages that we don't need. And this is the default group that you'll already be in with NixOS. So we want to keep that there so we don't mess up the permissions on our home directory. And we're going to create a new group. So users.groups.steamOS, that's the name of the group. And GID, we're going to make it 1000 so it matches. And then we're going to make our primary group. The reason for doing this is now anything we do while we're in NixOS, we'll, we'll create files with the same GID and UID as the SteamOS ones. So when we, if we reboot into SteamOS, everything's still going to be fine. Okay. And now let's check. Let's get the UID of that partition, dev, disk, by id dash lah and we're looking for there it is by by uuid sorry and then where is it so that's the uuid of our desk we're just going to take that number copy it and we're going to go into our hardware on next and we can just Copy one of these to use as a template. And we're going to paste in the UUID there. And it's ext4. And we can just take that out. Let's check one more thing on slash. Steam wants to use a swap file, and it's just going to be in the swap file. So we're going to want to enable that swap file as well. So right here under swap devices, okay. So in the swap devices, we're just going to create a new line there, and it's going to be. One of these and the device equals slash mnt steamos swap file. Okay, now let's just test all our changes. We're going to do an xos rebuild switch. Actually, before we do that, we're going to next channel dash desk list. So we're going to have to switch to the untable stable channel. And we'll take a look at this right now. This is Jovi and NixOS. It's where we're going to get all of our uh, modules and packages and a bunch of customizations to enable the Steam experience on NixOS. So one of the first things we have to do with it is it tells us to use the unstable channel. So we're going to switch our channel to unstable. And that's going to be Unstable, and that's called NixOS. Okay. And we're going to update the channel. And do a NixOS rebuild switch. Okay, now that that's done, we changed 
some of our SFS tab stuff and a bunch of user and group information. So let's just reboot first, make sure everything goes as planned. Make sure that everything mounts and when it comes back up, the swap is enabled and you have to log out anyway for your user and group changes to take effect. So, Okay, after rebooting, the first thing we're going to want to do is just change some of our permissions. on the home directory to make it so that all the files in our home directory are primary user ID and stuff. It's not that important, but some stuff that does check permissions and groups will complain if it's not on your primary group, like some encryption related things and keys. And now what we're going to do is edit our configuration.next. So I've edited mine just to take some of the comments out so that we can see more of the stuff we're working on at once, but otherwise it should be the same as your standard, as the stock Nix config, and I also changed the name right there. But that's arbitrary, you can have whatever name you like. So now we have to add our import, which we got from the Jovian website on the Getting Started page here. The revision you can get by going to the, their GitHub and just clicking this part right here then you just copy that long string out of the address bar right there after the commit. So I've already done that and I've already grabbed the hash. Um, to get the hash, you just do a rebuild switch once. You'd put all like zeros here or a dummy value. And then when you do a rebuild switch, it'll error saying, this is the hash we found. And then you just go back in and paste it in. So now let's start setting up the stuff to make the Steam experience work from Jovian. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it what type of device we have, which is jovian.devices.steamdeck.enable is true. This will, by telling it we're using a Steam Deck with this option, it saves us having to specify a bunch of other options related to hardware configuration. So this will build everything with the correct defaults for our hardware. Jovian.steam.enable equals true. So we're going to set this up to work very much like the default Steam OS experience where it'll boot right into the Steam interface. And we're going to make it so you can switch to a desktop session as well. We also have to specify the user, and that'll just be whatever user you specified. Let's specify mine. And jovian.steam.desktop session equals plasma Leyland. There we go. And then we need to, since we disabled the X server there, we're going to enable Wayland, which is programs.wayland.enable equals true. And I believe that's everything we need to get started building. So one thing I'm going to do that we don't, don't normally do, but this is going to build the kernel and a lot of other stuff, and it's going to take a long time. I've done this a couple times now when testing, and it takes about an hour to build on the Steam Deck. So I'm going to use a faster box. And you can do that by specifying build hosts. It basically outsources all your compiling to another system. And then transfers everything back. It'll ask you your password a couple of times, so you sit tight for a few minutes while it does that, and then you should be good. Oh, and as always, I made a typo in the configuration, and that's auto start. Should have a capital S. And I already see what I did wrong there. It's programs dot X Wayland. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, this is going to take a very long time, so I will stop the video and we'll meet back up when the compiling is done. After the rebuild's complete, let's just go ahead and reboot. You would get one different thing showing up here after the reboot that I didn't actually capture. I'm not sure where the footage went, but before you get the, you would see the update and the login screen, you'd be given the option to choose your language and connect to your Wi-Fi. It's the same screen you would see on your Steam Deck normally when you set up the first time, so we're not missing much. Once the update's complete, just go ahead and log into your Steam account. And once the interface loads, we're gonna switch back into desktop mode. So to do that, just go down to the little Steam menu and choose power and then switch to desktop. I'm just gonna switch back to the SSH session on my desktop to do this last part. Now what we need to do is create a symlink to the Steam library on our NVMe drive, the one that our SteamOS instance is using. You can put the symlink anywhere on the NVMe drive. I made a folder called NixDeck and we'll put it in there. And then we're just going to symlink the Steam Apps folder into this folder. And now all we have to do is go into our Steam interface and add the new library. So let's switch back to the desktop mode on our Steam Deck. Then just open up Steam. Go up to the Steam menu, go to Settings, and then go down to Storage. Click on the little drop down up here, and then Add Drive. And then just browse to that folder that we sim linked. So to, in my case, it'll be under Mount, SteamOS, and then NixDeck. So you don't actually point to the Steam Apps folder, you point to the one that we created the sim link in. There we go, if we click on there again, you'll see our new storage listed. For some reason, it'll show it as an SD card and not the internal drive, but that doesn't matter. Let's just log out and switch back to the Steam Deck interface. And once that loads up, you can just go into the Steam menu, go to settings, scroll down to storage, There you go, you can see the library from our SteamOS install. All the games that were installed there are now accessible.